In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 26 to 29, we read, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many, for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. All the benefits of God contained in the cup are for the children of God, but in the past Christians have not been taught how to receive them. Today, however, the Lord is saying, Drink ye all of it. Use everything of me. I gave my whole self for you. I gave you the divine Son of God, and I gave you the Son of Man as well. I gave you both man and God. I gave all. I am your everything. To have everything is to have the whole Jesus and all he used when he was here on earth. To have everything is to be partakers of Jesus' divine blood. We have Jesus' blood in our souls and we are partakers of Jesus' body, the Word. The psalmist said, Taste and see that the Lord is good in Psalm 34, 8 and Jesus makes his people sweet. You have seen some of the most bitter people become sweet when they receive salvation. Where did that sweetness come from? From the sweetness of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is unveiling himself to the Bride of Christ. Jesus wants the Bride of Christ to know everything that is to known about him, because the rapture and the marriage supper of the Lamb are that close, so close, feel that it is a heartbeat away. And Jesus, the protector of the Bride of Christ, is dining and leading the Bride into green pastures and beside still waters. And Jesus is everything to each member of the bridal company. To have understanding of Jesus is to love and adore him, to enjoy him more than we have ever dreamed we could. To carry his peace, to have inner peace and to hold his hand in ours is to have understanding of him. And Jesus told the Jews, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. St. John 14:67. He meant exactly that. Before Abraham was, Jesus existed, and Moses knew about him, and Jesus was the invisible Christ that Moses had the vision of thousands of years ago, the theophany. The Lord said, The Lord thy God will rise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. In Deuteronomy 18:15. This revelation given to Moses made him willing to pay the price to go into the greatness of God. And Jesus is the Son of Man, which makes him our brother as well as our companion, father, mother and sister. He is our everything. All the riches of heaven are in Jesus. All the riches and love we will enjoy for eternity are all in Jesus. All the peace, all the kindness and all the fruits of the Spirit are part of the unsearchable riches of Jesus. Born of a woman, Jesus brought the whole Godhead within him, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but all connected together for this greatness. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, we're part of God, we're part of the Holy Spirit, we're part of Jesus, we're part of the whole powerful Godhead, and through Jesus the whole body of the Godhead dwells within us. Our soul cannot be destroyed by any forces of darkness. It's not possible. The devil can't destroy one soul standing in the Godhead, and all the devils coming after that one soul will not be able to overpower it. In Romans 8, 34 to 39 reads, Who is he that condemneth? Christ that died, ye rather, that is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, or who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus, at the right hand of the Father, makes intercession to the Father. The Father answers our prayers, just as he answered the prayers of Jesus when Jesus was here on earth. And Jesus, the very divine Son of God, as well as the Son of Man, came down here in love, knowing his place in heaven was waiting for him when he had completed his mission. And Jesus is our pastor, our preacher, our evangelist. How wonderful to have a pastor like him. 
daily forevermore. I seek to be as much like Jesus as I possibly can be. And when something happens, I want to know what Jesus would do. How would Jesus handle this? Psalm 1215. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is our shade upon thy right hand. And Jesus keeps us in the hollow of his hand, in his spirit, in his love, in his peace. He keeps us in his joy if we will let him. And Jesus is not a tyrant. He does not force himself on any human being. The Lord will walk the waters for us if he wants to walk the waters. But if we don't want him, he let us choose the angry sea of life, all for ourselves. And if you want his help, call for it. And when Peter called for Jesus' help, Peter got that help from Jesus. In Matthew 14, 28-31. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he came, and he said, Come. And when Peter was come down of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thee, your little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? To receive help from Jesus, we have to use that help daily, night and day. Use that help, that strength, that peace, that joy. The sweetness of the Lord, this help of the Lord is not forced on us. Jesus is the healer of broken hearts. No matter what has broken our heart, the healer of broken hearts will live within us. And Jesus is the healer, but we must learn to depend on him. If we have no human being to share our love of life with, we don't have to be a lonely soul. Jesus will be our mother, our brother, our sister. And Jesus will be our everything. We can be so happy in Jesus. He will be our love. Many people have never had real love, and they need the whole Jesus to make up for that which they never had in human love. The Lord will make up the difference. We will never walk alone. We will never live alone. We will never be alone. Jesus is the healer of broken hearts, and he'll heal your broken heart. Your mate may still be alive, but perhaps that one is not really a mate. That one doesn't really love you. You may think you married the wrong person. It's always a fuss. Don't fuss anymore. Stop your side of it. Let it be and let Jesus be your everything. The Lord can heal that broken heart too. Although your mate will not accept Jesus and will miss heaven, will miss the rapture, you will still make it. Study the early church and you find the saints of God were separated from husband and wife and friends, mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And many were betrayed. But the Lord was there everything, and they went to the lion's den with heads high, singing until the last breath was taken from them. The devil couldn't stifle their praises. They shouted hallelujahs to the blood of Jesus, long as they had breath. And Jesus took our place in all the rough spots of life to let us have the good places. And Jesus took the thorns himself so we wouldn't have to suffer with them like he did. We suffer some persecutions, but we don't have to suffer like Jesus suffered. And Jesus gets no glory out of diseases or sickness. Jesus gets glory when we are healed. With love and grace we should sacrifice our spirit to the Lord. Obeying the Holy Spirit is our reasonable service. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In Hebrews 12.1 Presenting your body as a living sacrifice before the Lord should be a living joy. For, for people to see the works of grace for a new creation, we're walking living epistles. The Lord wants us to forgive others for things done to us. We should be willing to forgive anybody and everything they do to us, just as Jesus was willing to forgive others. And Jesus is here and we're close in with him. The world is shut out and we're being brought in close with the Lord. We can feel Jesus' heartbeat of love for us. Jesus is our saviour, and we can feel his love as it settles down all around us. Jesus is here, and this is our hour to receive the greatness of Jesus, to enable us to win every lost soul that Jesus has ordained for us to win. And we can feel the great love of our Jesus, and how much Jesus was thinking of us the day he went to the cross and paid that great price for our sins. And Jesus didn't fail us that day, and Jesus will not fail us. Jesus is our Redeemer, he is our Saviour, he is our Lord, and because of Jesus all heaven is ours. And we only need to open our heart's door and the Spirit of God will flow an anointing of reality into our souls. To give over to the love of Jesus and see him as he went to Calvary that day for us with a crown of thorns and dragging the cross that he was to be crucified upon, we can then serve more of his love, more of his grace, and we can be greater witnesses. You've been hurt, you have tried to survive, you've tried to overcome, but it seems there's no way to get over this. Let the Lord heal your broken heart. 
If you have a companion who won't cooperate, who is full of anger and wants to fuss, don't let him or her drag you down. That one has done enough damage to you in this life too much, in fact. Or maybe it's a child who's afflicted or a child gone astray. Let the Lord heal your broken heart. Perhaps you're just about dying with disappointment. Your hopes are so high, but they've all been scattered, and it's robbing you. Now you must claim the promise. The joy of the Lord is your strength in Nehemiah 8.10. And the Lord will help you. And Jesus was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief in Isaiah 53, 3. But he was also a man of great joy and peace. The reason he had so many sorrows was he took yours and mine. The Lord is ready to help you with your sorrows today. No matter what has broken your heart, let the Lord heal that broken heart. You can't live without love. The sunshine's gone, the moon and stars, everything is gone. You have to be loved. You just can't have life without God's love. Let the Lord do a work inside you today that you never thought possible. And if you have a broken heart, just put your hands over your heart today and let Jesus' healing love be real to you. And if you have a broken heart over a child or, or over anything, just feel his great love and care for you and your concerns. And Jesus can feel that broken heart of yours. And he's the only one who can heal it. He's the only one who has the cure. He is a perfect cure. God manifested in the flesh. Let his very presence become real to you now. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, let me pray with you now. Dear God, save my soul. I do believe in the blood of Jesus, and I'm sorry that I sinned against you. But I've come back to you, and I'm going to serve you, Lord, the rest of my life. And I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all my sins. Come on into my heart, Jesus. If you meant that prayer, Jesus has come. If you meant it, the blood of Jesus is flowing in that soul of yours. It has washed away every sin stain. Walk with him, serve him, live in his word, pray, fast, and one day heaven will be yours. God bless you and keep you. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 26 to 29, we read, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. All the benefits of God contained in the cup are for the children of God, but in the past Christians have not been taught how to receive them, Today, however, the Lord is saying, Drink ye all of it. Use everything of me. I gave my whole self for you. I gave you the divine Son of God, and I gave you the Son of Man as well. I gave you both man and God. I gave all. I am your everything. To have everything is to have the whole Jesus, and all he used when he was here on earth. To have everything is to be partakers of Jesus' divine blood. We have Jesus' blood in our souls, and we are partakers of Jesus' body, the Word. The psalmist said, Taste and see that the Lord is good, in Psalm 34, 8, and Jesus makes his people sweet. You have seen some of the most bitter people become sweet when they receive salvation. Where did that sweetness come from? From the sweetness of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is unveiling himself to the bride of Christ. Jesus wants the bride of Christ to know everything that is to be known about him because the rapture and the marriage supper of the Lamb are that close, so close, feel that it is a heartbeat away. And Jesus, the protector of the bride of Christ,